Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Psalm chapter 4 verse 8, Isaiah chapter 2 verse 11, and James chapter 4 verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for word, fruitfulness, abundance, joy, joy in the Holy Ghost, Lord. We thank you for it. We praise you for it. We give you the glory. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Psalms chapter 4, verse 8. In peace, I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O oh Lord, make me dwell in safety. All right. And so we know that Psalms chapter 4, verse 8 is, is such a beautiful um, verse because Psalms chapter four is not a place where you would think of sleeping. <laughs> it's not a place of what you would think would bring about peace or sleep or safety, right? We know that David is dwelling in the midst of conspiracy and evil and physical um, distress, right? And yet it says, in peace, I will lie down and sleep for you alone, O oh Lord, make me dwell in safety. So God is the one who is your keeper. God is the one who, as we said a couple of days ago, he keeps the bugs off of you, right? When you're fanning the bugs away from the baby, he's the one doing that, right? He's the one who is watching over you. He is the one who is causing you to, to lie down and sleep. And, and dwell in safety and in peace, right? It, it's not our circumstance. Our circumstance doesn't dictate those things. Our circumstance does not dictate the, the condition of our heart, the condition of our spirit. That comes from above. That is a peace that is of Holy Spirit, that is of Christ, right? And, and our, that's where we get our hope from. So even in the midst of this world, as it is going through, God is about to allow his bride to just experience peace, um, sweet sleep, even as she is dwelling in the midst of turmoil, right? God is with her. So the second verse that the Lord gave me was Isaiah chapter two, verse 11. The haughty looks of man shall be brought low and the lofty pride of men shall be humbled and the Lord alone will be exalted in that day. All right. And so that is speaking about, um, it's speaking about the the day of the Lord, right? When when the high will be brought low, when when people who thought they knew will will come to know a little bit better, right? They're going to be humbled. They're going to realize they don't know as much as they thought they did. And so, you know, when you look at Psalms four eight, with that, you can say, you know what. I can go to sleep on this. I can re relax. I can rest in this. I can put my hope in him because Christ alone is my hope. And so God is about to, to humble some, right? And he's about to lift some up. He's about to bring peace and, and safety. And he is about to, to bring peace and safety right? We know what that means. And so we have to put our hope and our trust in him that when the division comes between the two, we're going to be lying down in peace, right? Peace. I will, in, in peace, I will both lie down and sleep for you alone. O oh Lord, make me to dwell in safety. All right. And so the third verse that the Lord gave me was James chapter four, verse 12. There is only one lawgiver and judge, he who is able to save and to destroy. But who are you to judge your neighbor? All right. And so we know that the lawgiver and the judge is Christ, right? Christ is the one who is able to, to decide who is right, who is wrong. Why? Because he fulfilled the law. He was the one who actually was able to do all of it, to not fall short in any of it, right? He knew how to navigate the law. And so because of that, he can stand as judge. God gave him granted him that that authority that leadership right not us we don't walk in judgment we stay away from that right because when you do you're saying you're adequate to judge the law 
And so God is not wanting that as our role. He doesn't want us to be judged. So therefore he doesn't want us to judge. So we want to walk in his mercy. It says there is only one lawgiver and judge. He who is able to save and to destroy. So those are the two divisions, right? We are the ones who will be saved. We'll have that peace, that that safety, that sweet rest. And, and those who are high and will be brought low, right? Those who are able to, he is able to save and to destroy. But who are you to judge your neighbor? Don't walk in judgment, right? As one who is going to be in peace, as one who is going to be in safety and have rest, we we need to realize that we're being spared a great judgment. We're being spared a great humbling. Why? Because we are humbled now, right? We are we are resting in him. Our peace is in him. It says, in peace, I will both lie down and sleep. That is our role, right? For you alone, O oh Lord, make me dwell in safety. All right. And so the 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 with the third verse is says, but who are you to judge your neighbor? Don't walk in judgment. We want mercy, right? We want to be shown mercy. So therefore you need to show mercy. You need to not be judging um, people when God is coming, when he's standing at the door, right? You want to be found being merciful and not being found um, walking in a path of judgment. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you for letting us see you and know you in your word thank you for giving us hope in you and in causing us to draw near to you lord god help us to hold fast to you and and not let go help us not to walk in judgment even when we're tempted lord god and we're being baited let us know when we're being baited let us know when we're being tempted God, to judge others. Lord Jesus, help us not to be prideful. Help us to walk by your spirit. In the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you for peace. Thank you for safety. Thank you for sweet sleep. Lord God, help us to dwell in you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you would have would like to receive Christ as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you have prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he is gonna show you the way and he's gonna bless your path. One of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down, read your word, chew on your word, and talk to him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So begin to seek his face today while he may be found. Also, one of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home using Holy Spirit, find other believers um, so that you can stay sharp in the word of God and be around them. Begin to tell people, testify of what God has done for you in your life so you can bring hope to others as well. Amen. Um, and go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care and be blessed.